Hi guys, this is gsnl.com and I'm here with a review of the Motorola Edge 20 which you seem to enjoy a lot in the unboxing video and we would like to thank you for the large amount of views we got there. So, uh, we're dealing here with a strong high mid-range phone which is very slim, very light and has a 108 megapixel camera at the backside while the facade hosts a very high refresh rate screen. So, Motorola is back in the game and is bringing us a device which is priced, I would say, decently uh, and should be floating at around $500, maybe less in some countries, some of which are throwing a Fitbit Lux as a bonus when you buy the phone. Okay, so uh, we have tested the Motorola Edge last year and it was um, a narrow phone with a curved screen. This one is a pretty wide phone with a flat display and a penchant towards games on account of the high refresh rate. Speaking about the design first and foremost, it's obviously one of the slimmest and lightest phones I've played with this year. It's actually 2.3mm slimmer than the Motorola Edge and 25 grams lighter. Its flat edges resemble the iPhone 12 series and uh, the backside may be a bit of a fingerprint magnet but as you saw in the unboxing we have a bundled case. Grip is quite fine and we're dealing here with a pretty solid build, it doesn't feel fragile. We have Gorilla Glass protection at the front at the same time the screen has applied a protective layer so that's pretty fine by me. It's pretty maneuverable and uh, the only thing which will impede you is how wide it is on account of the not so comfy one hand usage. Okay so that's it pretty much design wise, well built and comfy but drawing some prints at the back side. When it comes to the screen you can already tell that it's pretty bright and solid. This is a superb looking OLED that we have here. It's excellent for video consumption. It has a 6.7 inch diagonal Full HD Plus resolution and a 144Hz refresh rate, just enough to play the game Dead Cells on it. It supports HDR10+, and uh, I'm going to show you a sample of video playback now, so you can tell just how good the screen is. As you can see, the fact that uh, we have here a punch hole in the middle of the front of the device, the top side, doesn't bother us, it doesn't spoil the immersiveness, it's a small punch hole and we have pretty wide view angles, pretty crisp and vivid colors, nice contrast even in the full sunlight and deep blacks, it's satisfying to watch Netflix on it, YouTube and so much more. Now we're happy with all of these and um, let's see what we got during our usual tests which involve brightness. So we achieved 600 lux units which is quite satisfying and uh, compared to other phones well uh, what we're dealing with here is a handset which is 100 lux above the Motorola Edge from last year so that's quite a compliment let's see which other models we surpassed so this device beats the likes of the uh, ZTE Axon 20 we're also surpassing the Realme 8 Pro the Oppo Reno 5 Lite and even the Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus which is a pretty big deal. Now, uh, phones that are better than this one, maybe the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, the Xiaomi Mi 11, the LG Velvet and the Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite 5G, but not by a huge margin. Also the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G, which is the biggest rival that this phone has. Now that we're satisfied with the screen, uh, you can actually learn more about it by going here in the settings, go to the display and aside from the usual features we have peak display, screen timeout and colors which can be set to natural or saturated, there's a color temperature slider here as well and we also have uh, the display refresh rate, it's set to auto by default, can be set to 60 or 144 hertz which is the smoothest but consumes more battery, you just saw me swiping to the side, uh, it's a gesture which has become customary, I've gotten accustomed to it uh, ever since the tutorial in the initial phone setup. As far as the hardware is concerned, let me take you to the CPU thanks to the IDA app. It's a Qualcomm Snapdragon 778 processor, 778G 5G actually, the same one from the recently launched Galaxy A52s 5G. It offers a pretty solid performance and it's not alone, it's joined by the 8 gigs of RAM and 128GB of storage. There is no microSD card slot here just so you know. But what we do have are a series of benchmarks, which we have here. 
let's start with Antutu 8, where you can see us above a former flagship Huawei P40 Pro Plus, above the Huawei Mate 30 Pro, and quite a few other devices. So in this test, we were able to beat Huawei Mate XS, the Xperia 5, Oppo Reno 6, and the Galaxy A52 5G, but we scored below the Xiaomi Mi Lite, uh, Mi 11 Lite 5G, and the Poco X3 Pro, just so you know. When it comes to Geekbench 5, the multi-core subtest brought us shockingly above the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra and the S20 Ultra, so those are pretty high feats for a mid-range phone. And here we're below, once again, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G, Poco X3 Pro and the Galaxy S20 Plus, plus the Moto G100, which is sort of spiritually related to this handset. There's also the all-important benchmark which we have here, 3D. 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme ES 3.1, which has to do with graphics and the GPU. I would say it's a pretty decent result, just above the iPhone 11 Pro Max and OnePlus 7 Pro. Uh, let's see which other models were surpassing. Xperia 5, Galaxy Z Flip, the first one, iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is a bit of a shock. But we're below the Zenfone 6, Huawei P40 Pro, and more relevantly, Poco X3 Pro and Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 5G. The conclusion is that uh, within the area of mid-range phones, it can hold its own, so performance is fine. And I didn't notice any sluggishness or lag, and the temperature was, let's see here, 37.2 degrees Celsius in benchmark, so no overheating, and in games, 35.6 degrees Celsius, so we can definitely play that sells Asphalt, Call of Duty Mobile without any hassle or hitch. We have covered uh, basically everything performance related, we've gotten into the whole um, hardware thing and as far as the battery is concerned, it's, I would say, sacrificed. 4000 mAh sacrificed for the sake of such a slim, slim waistline. Okay, so 4000 mAh and the ability to charge at about 30 watts, but did it deliver? We have a bunch of tests. So, we have the video playback one first and it's actually not that bad. 16 hours and 8 minutes, just slightly above the Xiaomi Mi 10 Lite and Mi 11 Lite, the 5G versions. Well, let's see which other models were surpassing. Okay, so this handset was able to beat devices like the Oppo A72, Galaxy A50, Moto G 5G+, Plus. Uh, Poco M3, Xiaomi Mi 10T, which is a bit more relevant, and even the Xiaomi Mi 10T Pro. At the same time, with its 16 hours, it stays below Xiaomi Mi 11 Lite 4G, the Motorola H20 Pro, which will also be tested soon by us, and the Oppo Reno 4 Pro 5G, as well as the, if you really want to know it, Galaxy A71. This is video playback, and let's see how the continuous usage is doing. It's a bit more modest. 10 hours and just one minute. It's in the lower echelon, but still it surpasses Galaxy S20 Ultra and Galaxy S21 5G. Nowadays we have come to expect more than 10 hours, even though 10 hours should be enough for most users. We want more. I mean, it's superior to the Zenfone 8, superior to the Nokia 8.1, but at the same time, it's one hour below the uh, Realme GT 5G. It's also below the Huawei P40 Lite 5G and gets beaten by the first OnePlus Nord and the Oppo Reno 4 Pro 5G. And also the Galaxy A52 5G, which is one of the core rivals, has 2 hours and a half above it. Charging requires 1 hour and 13 minutes, which should have been faster if I'm being really honest. And after 30 minutes, you're at 56%, which is actually not that bad. Now that we're done with this uh, battery thing, let's talk about the acoustics. Okay, so here we only have a singular speaker, we don't have a stereo setup, it's just this one here, and I think it's time to put it to the test with some copyright-free music.
Okay, so this one was expected. The device vibrates a lot when we're listening to music. It happens to most slim phones. I have to say, it doesn't quite pack a punch. That's the vibe I'm getting. I mean, all the frequencies are right, but there's not much bass going on here. The volume is just okay. It's definitely not enough to bother the people around you. That's the vibe I'm getting. And that's the maximum volume we achieve. So, okay, frequencies, okay, high notes, some modest bass, and not much of a volume, which is actually confirmed by our test here. So we achieved 84.6 decibels with an acoustic sample, and for gaming, 94.5 decibels. Usually we require at least 100 decibels for gaming to be impressed. And let's see the values here. Uh, with the one here, uh, with the whole 84.6 thingy, we were just able to surpass older phones like the iPhone 7 Plus, Galaxy S7 Edge, Note 8. There are not many new phones below the handset here, as you can see, so definitely not very impressive. Some phones are 3 decibels higher, like the Oppo Reno 5 5G, like, uh, for example, the Moto G30 superior to it and the Xperia 10 Mark II. And in gaming, once again, expected more. It's on par with the Moto G6, which is pretty old nowadays, but at least it surpassed the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G. Now that we're done with the acoustics and we expected a bit more, I think uh, I'm going to have a look here maybe to see if there are any special options. We have Crystal Talk AI to reduce background noise for clearer speech and the audio effects. You can actually create custom profiles here with a bunch of audio presets and settings. It's auto right now, but can be set to music, film, game, or podcast. And each of them can be customized using the frequencies you have here, bass boost, volume level, and so much more. So you can actually solve the bass problem I mentioned before, well, only slightly. Okay, so on the camera front, I'm going to switch to a white background so you can properly see the cutout, the punch hole for the 32 megapixel front camera. That's the front one. The backside hosts a triple back camera, the start of the show being the 108 megapixel shooter with combined pixels in one, achieving 12 megapixel shots. Here we have the dual LED flash and a special microphone which I feel that provides a sort of audio zoom. Aside from the 108 main megapixel main camera, uh, which has phased action autofocus. We have an 8 megapixel telephoto camera with 3x optical zoom and optical stabilization, plus a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera, which should help with your uh, macro needs. We have a 4K videos at 30 frames per second and the camera app, I'm sure you saw it in the unboxing and figured out by now. These are the core options, spot color, panorama, cinemagraph, cutout, the full resolution, scan, portrait, night vision, which is basically night mode, group selfie, pro, and dual capture, which splits the screen in two, taking captures at the same time with the front and the back camera. Now I think it's time to go to the samples. Okay, so here we go. Now we're accessing the photos department to see some of the shots we've taken. And uh, let's see them here. In the library, we have quite a few shots here, actually hundreds of them. And let's start with the daytime ones. Okay, so some things to remember here, we're working with a 108 megapixel camera. And I have to say that the details are quite fine when it comes to taking shots with the main camera. It's 12 megapixels, but the pixels are combined into one. Now, we have some photos taken with zoom. And before we get to those, so we have the regular shots and we have the ultra wide shots. The best thing about the ultra wide camera here is that it doesn't distort the image. I'm talking about especially the edges of the frame of the capture and as well as the colors. The colors are not changed from the main camera, which is a positive aspect. Speaking of colors, I'm quite satisfied with the way they're captured. They're pretty realistic and kept in check compared to what I perceived with my own two eyes. Even the vegetation looks quite nice, even though the top parts of the trees, the ones exposed to the sun, may be just a little bit more intense in contrast or more saturated than, would, than we would have liked them to be. Clarity is spot on, and this is one example of the zoom. I mean, it's fine and all, it's 3x optical zoom, it's, I would say, on par with the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition 5G and superior to the Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus, which don't have 3x optical zoom. At the same time, I feel that uh, an older phone like the OnePlus 7 Pro had a better 3x optical zoom. Another example of fine texture, and check out the details here, I actually 
zoomed quite a bit with my own two hands and as you can see the details are quite fine those uh, knobs are well represented so so far so good the colors are fine there's uh, enough texture for me we had some difficulties here and there when trying to get really close to take a proper macro we had to take a few attempts but in the end uh, we do have some flowers here to show off so not the best macro in the world especially since we're lacking a dedicated camera but usually that one has a lower resolution so we're actually gaining something here a bunch of beautiful monuments since this one is in the middle of the lake this is where the zoom comes into play and when you go past 3x there's a lot of noise happening here so keep that in mind 3x is fine more than that is not flattering okay so selfies we have them here and i have to say that uh, among all the shots i've taken i was actually surprised i remember the motorola edge and motorola edge pro not being very impressive as far as selfies are concerned these are actually much better you can actually see the pores on the face the texture is fine for the beard for the t-shirt especially for the hair the hair was particularly well rendered here in these shots so call this a pleasant surprise i don't remember motorola phones being a landmark in selfies so this is probably one of the best phones when it comes to the selfie capture so there's that we have several more shots here and several more attempts at macros and close-ups i mean close-ups are fine but once again closer focus poses problems even to big shots so that the galaxy s20 ultra and s21 ultra more selfies as I said before, the gallery is quite rich and a perfect example of why you may require an ultra wide shot to get all the frame in action here. And even with the sun in front of us, the exposure was pretty well kept in check, expect, except for the areas where the sun was shining directly onto the vegetation. A rich colors here. So all in all a satisfying experience. I feel that some of the overexposure from last year from the Motorola Edge is now gone. Things are better calibrated and the selfies are a clear improvement. These are daytime shots. Let's see the nighttime ones. We have a rich gallery here. Before those, we have some indoor metro station tube station samples which are actually fine color wise and the light sources are well represented now we go outdoors where this is a regular shot and this one is a night mode shot not much of a difference here but it's actually lighting up the place just a little bit not as much as other phones i'm actually not very impressed by the nighttime shots i feel they could have been a bit better there's a lot of noise going on and the light sources are quite big uh, the night mode, better said night vision, night vision isn't that impressive. So overall it feels like it's showing its true mid-range identity. It's not trying to be a flagship killer when it comes to nighttime shots. And as you can see this one here misses the point. The light source is, the light source is totally lit up. And all in all, as you can see, there are missed shots. If you're using the ultra wide camera, you're definitely going to be disappointed. Some of the light sources are huge. There's a bit of blur here and there and um, noise if you're looking properly in some of the corners of the images and these are overblown light sources i actually remember the motorola edge from last year being decent in the nighttime department this one is also this the best it's not settling uh, setting any new records that's for sure it's just okay that's what we can say about nighttime capture here of course you're going to be learning more in the dedicated text review that we have for this device okay so we're done with the photos let's talk about the videos so for that i'm going to employ our video player here which shows us we have 23 videos which if you ask me is quite impressive we usually take about 13 or 15 so let's start taking them one by one uh okay so this one here is a I would say typical sample it's a typical static video with some pinch of zoom which is not exactly impressive as you can see the zoom is was a bit more impressive in photos compared to the videos that's for sure there's a lot of overexposure going on here let's try to find another one this one here is a stabilization test and it's actually not bad this one just like the other stabilization clips is satisfying because there's no flicker, there's no defocus, there's no problem here with the clarity of the image. And there's no trepidation, you won't feel the steps of the person walking around. This is the continuation of that clip, another test. 
and once again I don't see any problems maybe except for the uh, overexposure which happens for the trees more exacerbated than the one from the well uh, photos and check this out so this is the video from before where there is overexposure and an intense contrast for the vegetation and it's a full HD one this is a 4k video which handles colors much better for the vegetation see the palette of colors for this green this green and this green there are actually three shades of green represented in an excellent manner and I'm happy to inform you that you can stabilize pretty well in 4k which is something that not many phones can do and here we went up on the bridge ascended some stairs and as you can see there's no defocus there's no problem it's actually better filming than the predecessor for sure okay so a bunch of ads you may want more colors here uh, we have this uh, focus test which i would say it's quite fine changing focus on subjects pretty nice colors of flowers and we also have one with a bunch of fences which were really brought to life this one pretty vivid colors here but once again if you look at the tree behind the one from the left side it's uh, I would say Chernobyl sort of green it's way too lit up it's way too intense to be realistic but these colors are fine the artificial objects are well represented here okay and let's see what we have here another shot of flowers my advice stick to 4k that's the most satisfying experience I've had here and at the same time uh, be careful with the exposure of your shots you can take some majestic landscape pics and videos but uh, always be wary of the quantity of light you're capturing these are daytime clips let's show you some nighttime ones not exactly impressive so we have this one here which flickers a lot there was a bit of refocus here and there the street lights are pretty big and when there's an incoming car you can see it headlights amplified quite a lot the next one also during the night time a bit of noise here and there and a bit of flicker so definitely not flattering for a mid-range phone but it doesn't go all the way so it doesn't want to be a flagship killer at night and this one as well so definitely underwhelming and if you go into a darker area there will be a bluish tint here and a lot i mean a lot of noise and one more video here this is actually one of the better ones so if you're static and not moving around you may achieve some decent results during the night time but noise will be omnipresent that's it in a nutshell i'm actually pretty satisfied with the camera i mean it's not beating the galaxy s20 fan edition 5g or the xiaomi mi 10t pro but at the same time it is improving on the predecessor and not the regular motorola edge the pro one from last year that's the core thing to remember and this is not the highest end one it's the middle one now uh, moving past from that uh, as usual since we're dealing with a phone which is pretty well specced we're getting on a connectivity front and we're achieving stuff like uh, wi-fi 6e there's a uh, 5g here bluetooth 5.2 nfc usb c 2.0 port at the bottom there is gps glonass and so forth this is nfc it's available in this area for your payment needs and at the same time the calls are pretty loud and clear there's no obje objection in that regard now let's see how we did in the speed test we have it here and we also have the results which are pretty impressive i'm especially talking about the wi-fi ones we got up to 746 mega per second in download on wi-fi and 778 mega per second in upload on 4g they were a bit more modest on account of being in a more isolated area for the 4g test only 93.2 mega per second in download and um excuse me that's wi-fi so let's move to 4g 96.5 mega per second download on 4g and 10.5 mega per second upload on the same 4g definitely need to test this in an area with better coverage on the software front this is android 11 still we're waiting on google to deliver the android 12 update and we actually received an update for the camera motorola camera 3.0 the latest version and as usual aside from android 11 we're getting a stock experience here stock and vanilla except for this app that moto provides the my ux you're going to do your customization from here you can personalize your style font color icon shape layout and so forth you have your wallpapers which are actually very nice looking we have the gestures 
which I advise you use. They're pretty comfy to use and intuitive. Uh, we have the tips area. This is the display with pick display and attentive display, which actually re serve to replace always on display, which I mentioned before. Gamers have the game time feature with a bunch of tools, settings, acoustic lights, uh, blocking your accidental touches, setting a do not disturb, blocking notification and calls while gaming. Plus, we also have the audio effects you saw before. And aside from that, for security, we have a fingerprint scanner embedded in the power button. And as you can see, it's quite effective at unlocking the device properly. So this is the wrong finger and this is the right finger placed upon the power button and unlocking it. Now, aside from that, uh, you're going to be doing your classical things like, you know, split screen with two apps. Uh, the app doesn't support it, so maybe try this one. Split screen with maybe photos, so you can watch photos and scroll around the settings in the other one, just an example. Aside from that, if you keep pressed on the screen, you're treated to your typical stock widgets, nothing more than that. Swipe down and you're treated to the uh, quick settings and the notifications and in the settings area everything is stock you can set up the connectivity uh, battery display sound privacy with permissions accessibility digital well-being is also important to keep track of how many hours you spend in your apps there's system updates there's rating and feedback and that's about it and now one of the most important things about the device it's the ready for section we actually have two flavors of this there's ready for pc so you can basically share files and use your phone's app on the pc and use your phone as a webcam you cannot connect it to your pc or connect it to a display wirelessly you no longer need that usb-c to HDMI cable, which we used on the Motorola Edge and Moto G100. Now you can mirror your phone wirelessly. You can game with a gamepad on a larger TV or monitor. Uh, what else? You can watch videos, you can do a video call and you can use a desktop environment, which is pretty nice. And uh, it simulates the Windows experience with resizable windows, with a taskbar and so much more. And it requires a screen with a Miracast supported. That's pretty much it. Now, as far as the pre-installed apps are concerned, it's all stock and what we installed here. There's the Google Suite, there's Duo, there's Facebook Files, Google Fit, Gmail, Google One, Google Home, Maps, Motor Notification is here as well, Photos and Podcasts plus Sheets and Slides as well as YouTube. I think we're about done and uh, what we're dealing with here is a bit of a hybrid. On the one hand, we have the high refresh screen, which is definitely one for the gamers. On the other hand, a very slim device oriented towards productivity on account of uh, wirelessly mirroring its productivity features and a desktop-like environment plus the function that allows it to be a sort of webcam. And let's see the pros and cons. Okay, so on the pro side, it's a very easy to wield phone. It's uh, also very light and slim. It looks quite nice, especially when you have the case applied. It has an excellent screen and I'm talking about both the refresh rate and the brightness and I would also add the colors to it. Uh, we have pretty, a pretty good level of performance delivered by its CPU as well as the RAM and storage. Uh, I would also mention that the main camera is satisfying and the ultra wide one and the selfie one were a bit of a surprise. Stabilization was spot on, Wi-Fi was very fast, Ready 4 may sell the phone by itself and uh, I would also mention the fact that it doesn't overheat in games and that the 4K videos have a lot of details and pretty decent colors. And uh, that's pretty much it. Of course the stock interface is an appeal to many people. On the downside here is the fact that the phone draws a few fingerprints with the backside. Uh, the battery is a bit underwhelming. I actually purposely left out the uh, video playback, which is actually decent because the uh, continuous usage and the charging don't do justice to the not to the current requirements. So lack of micro SD is on the cons. The fact that we don't have enough battery life, the speakers are underwhelming. The phone may become a bit slippery every once in a while. There's some overexposure in Full HD videos. And uh, I would also say that uh, um, we could have had stereo speakers. That would have been nice. In the end, this is a high mid-range phone which fights Galaxy S20 Fan Edition on equal terms as well as the Xiaomi Mi 10T and Mi 10T Pro. And it's actually better suited to rival the pro version of this predecessor, not just the regular one. 
So if you get it with a special offer which bundles a Fitbit or maybe a pair of headphones, it actually you shouldn't hesitate when it's $500 or 450 because uh, the design ready for and I would say the main camera and screen sell the phone by themselves. But be advised that when you put this on a flat surface, it will wobble quite a bit on account of it being slim and the camera protruding at the backside. That's it from gsnom.com. Search for a good price for this device and it can actually be worth it. Bye bye.